Next up, we have Golem, the Megaton Pokemon and the evolved form of Geodude and Graveler. This Pokemon is one of those with a pretty cool design, even though I don't know what it's supposed to be exactly. What is it, like a turtle? I guess it's a turtle. I don't know. Golem debuted in the anime, where it defied Poke logic by shrugging off Bulbasaur's grass attacks before succumbing to Charmander's fire ones. And another Golem does this in the first movie by losing to Pikachu's electric attacks, even though it's a ground type. Yeah, we're still trying to wrap our heads around that two decades later. But here at FSG, we prefer order to chaos, and thus we will examine Golem in the competitive scene, where this nonsense will never happen. So as always, we pose the question, how good was Golem actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Ever since the beginning of Gen 1 overuse, Golem has been locked in a battle with Rhydon for the title of Superior Rock and Ground Type, a niche incredibly important because they hard counter the otherwise terrifying Zapdos, who's one of the most lethal Pokemon available if the rocks aren't around. Now, before you ask why they aren't automatic additions to teams in that case, it's because they're slow, they get countered by the Omnipresent Executor, and they're weak to the Omnipresent Ice moves. This isn't to make them sound bad, it's just to illustrate that their main quality is not without drawbacks. They have other positives too, of course, and the differences between the two have split the opinions of Gen 1 battlers for two decades. Rhydon is more powerful and bulkier on both sides thanks to its massive HP stat that also allows it to put up 101 HP substitutes, thus surviving seismic tosses. Golem is faster and has explosion, so let's see how this concretely affects the game. Defensively, there isn't much of a difference. Blizzards and Ice Beams 2 hit KO both, Snorlax's Earthquake 3 hit KOs both, Exeggutor's Psychic kick is a 4% two-hit KO against Rhydon and 23% against Golem, while Alakazam is 48% against Rhydon and 78% against Golem. Realistically though, it's about the offensive numbers and tools. Golem's extra speed is better against Rhydon, and that's about it. Explosion lets it take out about double the amount of Tauros before dying than Rhydon's Earthquake would, which can be pivotal for one's own Tauros. But on the other hand, Rhydon's much more powerful Earthquakes has benefits such as always two-hit KOing Chansey, as opposed to Golem's 23% chance to do so, as well as having a 97% chance to 3-hit KO Snorlax, as opposed to Golem's virtually Nile chance to do so, and having a 69% chance to 3-hit KO Slowbro, as opposed to Golem's complete inability to come anywhere near that mark. So what this translates to is that Golem is more of a wall breaker with explosion, potentially clearing out or at least heavily damaging a major threat, such as Exeggutor, Lapras, Starmie, Snorlax, Slowbro, or Tauros, while Rhydon is more of a paralysis abusing wall breaker, and Sweeper who could potentially abuse it with Substitute, using the sheer power of its stabs to break through those Pokemon, barring Tauros who always tries to avoid paralysis. You may notice that Rhydon does not have to kill itself in order to break through those Pokemon, which is what leads many players to prefer it, since it's more self-sufficient and actually remains alive to check Zapdos. However, other players prefer to be more aggressive and knock a hole in the opponent's team with Golem, which can blow a game open more quickly than Rhydon's repeated bashing. And of course, the Emergency Boom is incredible utility that can get one out of various pinches, such as when it's at low health or when it wants to end the turn against Slowbro, so the follow-up Pokemon can finish it off. And with all that being said, overall, Golem was amongst the key Pokemon of Red, Blue, and Yellow overused. Now on to Gen 2. Thanks to an event, Golem received Rapid Spin in the same generation that Spikes were introduced. However, it was still pretty obscure and thus took a long time to be noticed. Previously, its so-called niche was basically Curse Rhydon, except with Explosion, which wasn't bad, but wasn't used much either. But once Golem was discovered, it took off. Of course, Golem doesn't want to take on the main Spiker, Cloyster, but given how often that Pokemon switches in and is targeted early in and throughout games, it's not all too difficult to bait it, remove it, and then get rid of it. Its spikes. Not only are lures like Thunder or Lovely Kiss Snorlax or your own Cloyster's Toxic excellent, but Cloyster also loves to explode. Golem was also a great spinner because thanks to its powerful earthquake, it utterly destroys the ghosts in the tier, and thus it is very difficult to spin block. Gengar is one hit KO'd 87% of the time from full health, and Mischievous is losing around half its health. Explosion and Normal Resistance are of course great weapons against Snorlax, and while the last move was originally Fire Blast to threaten Fortress, Roar eventually popped up as it 
would allow Golem to fulfill the phaser role that is just about mandatory on most GSC teams, and allowed it to compress more rolls into one slot. It also meant its only weapon against Curse Lax was an explosion, which would of course not be nearly as effective after a curse. At first, it was mostly used on offensive teams to help them relieve Spike's pressure, which was huge in helping Snorlax check the electrics, especially since Golem is a ground type. And while it doesn't want to eat several hidden power ices, and it definitely doesn't want to die to the rare hidden power water, its ability to directly switch in and respond to both aspects of the timeless GSC strategy of Thunder being spammed with spikes down is something nothing else besides the relatively obscure Don Fan can do. And Don Fan definitely doesn't fit on offensive teams the way Golem does thanks to its lack of explosion and normal resistance. Eventually, the logical next step of using Golem's spinning ability for more balanced and defensive approaches came to light, and it established itself as a top contender in the modern GSC metagame. It and Rhydon have similar surface roles, but the differences in how they function is night and day. Golem is a spinning exploder, basically team support, while Rhydon poses a sweeping threat. It was an extraordinarily late start for Golem, but it was a great case of better late than never. Unfortunately, since you cannot trade GSC Pokemon to Generation 3, and Rapid Spin was a second generation event, Golem lost it upon the generational shift. It thus became nothing but a lump in overuse, with Skarmory spiking on everything alongside a bounty of new waters and threats, such as Metagross, Celebi, Jirachi, Salamence, Arena Trap, Dugtrio, and Hidden Power Grass being everywhere, Golem was both walled and killed by just about everything. Rhydon suddenly rivaled it again, and it was vastly superior boasting Sword Swords Dance, Megahorn, and much better bulk to fend off the various earthquakes in the tier with. Thus, Golem dropped to underuse. There, its normal resistance and great physical defense was hugely useful in fending off choice banders like Kangaskhan and Fearow, the latter of which sometimes opted to run Hidden Power Grass solely for Golem. It then posed a threat in return. With choice ban, its stabs were incredibly tough to ward off unless there was a Gligar, and an explosion would basically truck everything. Of course, the lack of leftovers meant it wasn't exactly a permanent answer to things it was checking, especially in conjunction with spikes, but it wasn't meant to fill that role. It was meant to give offensive teams both a resist to threatening opposing offensive Pokemon, and a way to eliminate an opposing defensive threat to open up its own team's offense, and at this role, it excelled. Now on to Diamond and Pearl. Golem sadly stood no chance in overuse, especially with new counters such as Bronzong, Gliscor, and Poison Hill Breloom, among other things, ruling the roost. And unfortunately, Golem wasn't too effective and underused either. Its longtime rival Rhydon had somehow managed to both gain an evolution and also join it in the lower tier. It was tough to want Golem's 80 HP, 110 attack, and 130 defense when Rhyperior packed 115 HP, 140 attack, and equal defense alongside the ability solid rock. Thus Golem had to use the tools at its disposal. The one thing it could do decently is an all-out attacking Focus Sash lead set. With its stabs, which included Rock Blast for substitute Pokemon like Moltres and Miss Magius, Explosion, and the new Sucker Punch for priority, it could potentially rip a decent hole. However, it was fairly easy to predict around. For example, you could just go to Milotic and then to Rotom to eat the Explosion, and if they had Spiritomb, it was a whole other matter altogether, and could quite easily do nothing. This meant that even a good lead matchup against Scyther or Moltres could potentially not do much, and thus Golem dropped to never use. And even there, it wasn't very good, because it faced brutal competition with Regirock, who was not quadruple weak to grass or water, thus letting it more easily reap the benefits of its fire resistances, and being far less immediately threatened by most Pokemon, to the point where, while Golem feared one-hit KOs at every corner, Regirock would often require multiple Pokemon teaming up on it. Poor Golem. Golem predictably went straight to never used in the 5th generation. It had no hope of recourse whatsoever in any of the higher tiers. In never used, however, it was pretty rock solid. <laughs> Sorry, we had to get at least one rock pun in here. Its rock typing was incredibly useful against flyers such as Braviary, Swellow, and Rotom Fan, and it was a stealth rock setter Charizard didn't want to switch in on immediately either. Thus, it was a good way of ensuring that that menace would start at 50%, which was huge in limiting off its threat potential. This made for a solid Pokemon on offensive teams. It was also fairly customizable, since it already essentially held Focus Sash, thanks to the newly buffed Sturdy, and this rewarded creative players, who ran everything from custom that 
Legendary to let it be offensive despite its low speed even after it was taken to low HP, to Rocky Helmet to punish U-turns, to Leftover so it could get back to Sturdy even with Stealth Rock up. Its resistance to the hazard meant it only needed one turn. Explosion also meant it could spin block the rare War Turtle and keep up offensive momentum. Overall, Golem had a good, unique place in the never used metagame. Also in the days of Scolipede ruling the metagame, Golem could break through its Focus Sash with Rock Blast and thus limit it to one layer of spikes, which was huge considering how oppressive Scolipede could be. Unfortunately for Golem, its rival Rhydon was back once again, this time in never use, but now with the audacity to be able to run Eviolite, which meant it had absolutely ludicrous bulk, and Golem just couldn't catch a break from Rhydon, jeez. Thus Golem was pretty forgotten and dropped to the no man's land of PU. There however, it was pretty decent. It was key in staving off Stoutland and Dodrio, and with its standard specialty defensive spread, it could destroy electrics like Zeb Stryka, not caring much for hidden power ice, and proceeding to toxic a bulky grass like Tangela or Gorgeist. Sometimes they even ran Protect to really rack up the residual damage while maximizing its leftovers recovery, making it highly difficult to wear down and thus letting it stand unwaverly against whatever it was it'd be trying to check, even in the face of super effective coverage moves. It was overall a solid Pokemon within the PU metagame. While it technically does have a niche as an offensive stealth rocker with weakness policy to jack up its explosion or sucker punch, Golem is no longer a staple of PU. As a matter of fact, it's bad to the point where it has officially received the lowest dishonor a fully evolved Pokemon can have, the limbo of being untiered. However, not all is lost, because in Generation 7, Golem also got a regional variant, which is short, yeah, it's short for Alolan Golem. It gained the unique typing of rock and electric and got some awesome new abilities. Now, technically, this this golem is also PU, where it is outclassed by Probopass. However, it does have a very specific niche in overuse. It possesses Magnet Pole, trapping Steel types, and with Earthquake, it destroys Heatran. This is an absolutely incredible niche, considering how many Pokemon become dangerous once Heatran is out of the picture, such as Tapu Bulu and Mega Scizor. Of course, it needs a Choice Scarf, but that's a small price to pay. It also must be careful about switching in, since it is of course completely shattered by Earth Power. However, with good prediction, it can potentially reward its user like nothing else. Magirna also takes massive damage from Earthquake, and Excadrill is dispatched as well. These are things that Magnazone couldn't dream of. In a pinch, it can also take a Mawile Sucker Punch and remove it for good. With Wild Charge, it also crushes Celesteela, so long as it doesn't switch into a Leech Seed. And Fire Punch dispatches Ferrothorn and Mega Scizor. And this isn't a gimmick. Good players have used it in important games. It's not an OU staple, of course, but it definitely does have its small place in the metagame, which is quite nice after so many generations of being awful. Alolan Golem was unsurprisingly one of the Pokemon that was experimented in in early VGC 2017, since its new ability Galvanize let it blow through Celesteela, especially in electric terrain, while still packing Rock Stab for Alolan Marowak. But it was quickly discovered that it just wasn't that good, since it struggles with many staples such as Kartana, Tapu Bulu, and of course, the move Earthquake. In fact, the only notable placement we could find was Jackson Hambrick, placing 10th place at the Georgia Regionals. So well done to Jackson, but Golem was unfortunately not really part of this metagame or any metagame to follow. And that's it. So how good was Golem actually? In the first two generations, it was quite decent. Not the easiest, most intuitive thing to use, but definitely rewarding and possessing some key characteristics that let its niche shine on in the metas. However, generation three and onward, it became exclusively a lower tier Pokemon and it fell through the ranks pretty swiftly. Also, its rival Rhydon continued to bug it throughout the generations. It wasn't until its generation seven Alolan form breathed some new life back into it. This gave it a small but significant role within the Ultra Sun and Moon Overuse metagame. However, it is still a niche, and since it's basically Golem's first appearance in Overuse since GSC, that's pretty much all that needs to be said. Not all Pokemon can be amazing, sadly, and Golem's a prime example. Also for VGC, yeah, we literally just could not find anything until Gen 7. And even then, we only found one notable placement. And that's probably because Golem is a rock and a ground type, but there are much better rock and ground types in like every single VGC meta that probably have better moves. Thanks for watching, everyone. Everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And for today's video, I want to know, what do you think about Competitive Golem? How would you change it? Do you think Rhydon needs an Alolan form too? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. And as for the voting process, to vote for next week's Pokemon, go to the community tab of this YouTube channel, and there should be a post that goes up around the same time as this video is released, and you can comment on what Pokemon you want to see next week there. Thank you so much to the patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to all of you watching as well.
and follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.